Hi, I'm Dick Eit with Bites by Eit. We cater to uh, a elegant clientele along the eastern seaboard, from Manhattan to Greenwich to Nantucket, down to Florida, to Boca Raton, Vero Beach, and we're based in Atlanta, Georgia. So we, we make a restaurant quality food, simple restaurant quality food, that you can do at home for your friends and your family and your guests. So what we're making today is one of our fan favorites, our best bites that we do. And we're doing a pulled pork. It's a Boston butt pulled pork with a little bit of spice to it. And then in order to counter the spice, we are going to add sweet coleslaw and uh, pickles, bread and butter pickles. And then we're doing roasted jalapenos. And once you roast the jalapenos, the heat comes out. So I'll show you how to cut them, de-seed them, roast them, and then we'll add a goat cheese with a little bit of cayenne pepper, honey to add the sweetness and counter, and salt and pepper. So let's get started. We'll first uh, take the pork and we will season it. And we'll take the uh, anho chilies, the garlic, and the cumin. And we'll add this to it, a little bit of sea salt and pepper. And mix that up. Now when I do this, I, I usually use an entire pork butt. You can either do a three to five pound pork butt. I cut them into these bite-sized pieces here and it makes it easier to sear it, and it makes it easier to, uh, to cook and to shred in the Instapot. Okay, add a little more salt to this, and some more pepper, and we're good to go. Again, the uh, pork butt is at room temperature, so it cooks evenly, and you don't want to use cold meat always at room temperature. So let's go back and, and cook this in our extra virgin olive oil from our friends from Calavito olive oil. Okay, so I'll turn the heat up a little bit. I poured the olive oil in, so it's, it's up to temperature, a good flame going. I'll lay down the uh, pork away from me so there's no splatter. You don't want to have splatter, you don't want to get burned. And you can hear that nice sizzle minute and a half per side, and we'll flip it over and flip it over. So again, this is, I do a lot of uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres for parties, for graduations, even for weddings. And uh, I am down in the south. And in the south, they like their pork. They uh, love their shredded pork. So I do quite a bit of this for them. And this one, I use a little bit of heat to it. So this one has the most heat that I use. Uh, you can always vary the amount of, of spices you're using for it, but I try to have one that has a, a fair amount of heat because a lot of my clients, they love their heat. So I do the sweet barbecue and I do the pork that is a little bit spicy. Okay, you got some nice coloring there. It's nicely browned. There we go, that was down for maybe a minute or so. We'll move it around, let it sit, and we'll do this. You can serve it on any kind of bread that you want, but I like to vary it between the ciabatta bread and uh, the baguettes. So on this one, we'll use the baguettes. It's a little bit more stable and sturdy, and since uh, we're adding the coleslaw to it and we're adding the pickles, it's a good bread to have. So, and then once we finish searing this on all the sides, we'll put it in the Instapot, and it takes about an hour or so to cook. So, move it around a little bit. You can hear that nice sizzle. You can see the nice color in the caramelization. One more side. Right down there. Put it up against the side of the pot and it's getting cooked on both sides, the bottom and the side of the pan. So, it's a great item. Again, you can make this ahead of time, a day or so, and it just absorbs all the flavor. And uh, I can do this for 
20 people, for 100 people, for 200 people, and uh, it's, it's, it's a crowd pleaser. It's one of the fan favorites that they like. Okay, so now that we have a nice sear on this pork, okay, in order to make it cook a little bit faster and make it a little bit easier to shred, I'm gonna cut this into cubes, okay? And then we're going to uh, put it in the Instapot with a little bit more barbecue sauce, some chicken stock, okay? So here we go. So you can see that it's, uh, it has a nice sear on the outside and we still need to cook on the inside. So I'll cut this into some pieces. Try to make the pieces about the same size. I'll cut this one in half. And then same size cubes. This one's a little bit bigger. I'll slice this one down and then I'll cut this into more cubes. So again, you can see the nice searing we have, the nice coloring that we have on the outside, good flavor. And we're almost ready to put it in the pot, okay? We'll put in the uh, chicken stock on the bottom, pour that in there. I'll put in the uh, pork next, and then I'll put the barbecue sauce on top of it. And then I have some whole garlic which we'll add in there. So what I'll do with this, I will dice up the garlic. When I do the garlic, Daniel Blude from Blude always said to take out the pith of the garlic, which I like to do. I know some chefs that don't, but it makes it so it's less um, pungent and less strong. And sometimes when you eat garlic, you can feel it, you wear it for the next couple of days, but by taking out the, this pith, it really helps with the non-garlic breath and the non-garlic smell all over your body. So I took that one out. It's where the stem comes into, and you can see the pith coming out right here, and it attaches right to this piece here. So I just take all that out. You lose a little bit of the garlic that you have in there, but, uh, my clients really like that kind of consideration that I give them. Uh, they don't like to be having garlic breath, so I take it out. If Daniel Blued can do it, I can do it. So we'll just dice this up a little bit and then add in the garlic. This was uh, two cloves of garlic for about uh, a pound or so of, of pork. I think that's enough. I, I don't like to overdo the garlic, but I like, you know, especially when we will be cooking this for about an hour, I like to add it. It'll add some nice flavor to it. Never hurts to add a little olive oil, extra virgin olive oil to it, just to give it some good flavor. I like the Calavito extra virgin olive oil. They're a good sponsor of ours. And there we go. Put it in, hour, check it. It will be falling off the, uh, it'll be nice and stringy, and it'll be ready to go. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna, we've already put the extra virgin olive oil, the sea salt, and the pepper on the baguettes, and we're gonna grill these, and we'll get a nice little sear and char. And again, just a few minutes on this side, you can already hear it sizzling and popping. You can see the smoke coming out. If it gets too smoky and, and too uh, much heat, I can always turn down the heat to a medium, to a low. I can smell it starting to, uh, to burn a little bit. That's just on the edges, that's fine. The main part of it is well oiled, so it's, it's, it'll only burn. I can always cut that portion off. I'll move it over to the side. We're getting quite a bit of flame. And there you go, I'll move this around. So when you do this, you always wanna be uh, watching it. And uh, I'll just move it around on here. You get some nice coloring on that. I'll move it off to the side. Uh, this grill only has one speed. So you can see the nice sizzle you get there from the olive oil and the browning. That's really what you want. Again, I'll just trim that off. I'm gonna flip it over 
That side's pretty good. Let's take a look at this. That's nice. I'll trim this off and we are good to go. Turn this off, take it off, and that looks nice. It smells nice. And now we have the uh, grilled baguettes. Okay, so now we're gonna do the uh, jalapeno peppers with the goat cheese, the honey, the cayenne pepper, a little olive oil, a little sea salt, and uh, we'll roast those. But first we'll go and show how to de-seed them. You could put, keep the seeds in there, but it will make it uh, very hot, and most of my clients don't like that. I do have one client that has, uh, has had some Mexican restaurants, and he wants me to use the hottest peppers that I can find. And uh, I told him, you know, I could do one of those for you, but all of your guests won't want the hottest Serrano chilies, peppers. It's just not going to work. So most people don't want the hot, so I always take out the seeds. Here we go. I'll uh, slice it down the middle and I'll leave the, uh, the stems on just for presentation. It uh, just makes it look good. People can grab it. And once you roast the jalapenos, the heat just immediately drops. So it's, it's quite good and uh, you can do it. I've already cut two of them and I can feel the aroma and the heat from the jalapenos coming up into my eyes. So when you do this, two things, you can either uh, wear a mask, which is quite popular these days, and, uh, and take it out. After you finish handling it, wash your hands with soap and water, get those oils off your fingers, don't touch your nose, don't touch your eyes. So I'm gonna scrape these out and scoop out the seeds and uh, just sort of take your time on this. I wear glasses, so if any uh, of the oils squirt up, then uh, my face is protected, or at least most importantly, the eyes. And there you go. Almost all the seeds are taken out. So it's not that difficult to do. Again, just take your time when you do this and uh, use the edge of your spoon to take out the seeds, scrape it away. There's number two. You could use a knife, but I think if you use the knife on this, that you'll probably go through the jalapeno and you don't want that because when we put in the goat cheese with the honey and the cayenne, the salt and the pepper, the olive oil, it's gonna leak all over. So we wanna keep this intact as much as possible. So when we do this for clients and we do it uh, on premise, we do all of our cooking on premise, that uh, I'll ask the clients, you know, how hot do you want it? You want it really hot or you want it mild? And I say that's the beauty of bringing in a chef that can prepare the foods at your home. And she might say, well, Dick, let's do one or two uh, with the seeds but the rest without the seeds. So everything can be customized. The only trick on that is you have to uh, then remember which ones have the seeds. So we make those in a, in a separate batch so they don't get mixed up. And then when we serve it, we also uh, have to tell the customers, their clients, their guests, which ones are the hot ones and the not hot ones. So there you go. We're going to, you can either roast them on the grill or you can put them in an iron skillet. So I'm gonna put them in an iron skillet. And uh, so I'll put a little bit of, uh, of Calavito extra virgin olive oil, drizzle it, mix it around so everything gets uh, coated. And then I'll put a little bit of uh, sea salt and pepper on there. and then I'll mix that around. And then it's gonna be ready for the uh, iron skillet. Okay, so we got the oil in and we got the heat on and you can see a nice little heat to it. I was checking the heat, put a little salt in there to see if it's gonna sizzle. And I'm gonna put these uh, face down to start with and then I'll put the skin down. 
you can hear that sizzle pop, so it's a good temperature. And a few minutes on the uh, this side, and then we'll do it, uh, we'll turn it over, and we will do it on the skin and get a nice uh, blistering of the jalapenos. Again, these you can do uh, the day before uh, and then put them in the fridge. And once you stuff it with the goat cheese and the cayenne pepper and the honey and the salt and the pepper, you're gonna finish it off in the oven, bring it up to temperature. And, you know, in the South or anywhere, people love this dish. It's, uh, it is light, it's refreshing. Uh, a little bit of a spice to it, but not overpowering. Other variants you can do with this is you can take extra thick bacon and put it on top of the goat cheese. People in the South love their bacon, so I do it many times with that. I'll do some with bacon, some without bacon. It's a fun dish to have. My clients love it. When you serve it, uh, all they're going to see is this view of the uh, jalapenos and most of it is covered with the goat cheese. So they'll see the stem, they'll see maybe some of the edges. So as long as we get a little blistering and having it cook, if you wanted to, you could also uh, finish it off in the oven for another five, 10 minutes and have it cooked all the way through. But we can just do this on the, on the stove top. So you can see the, the blistering that we're getting already. Good color. Another 30 seconds, and I think that's enough. Jalapenos stuffed with goat cheese, cayenne pepper, honey, sea salt, and pepper. It's a crowd pleaser and one of our fan favorites. We got the jalapenos, we put them in the oven for about five minutes. After I put them in the oven, I washed my hands because I wanted to get all of the oil off of my hands and also in the fingernails because when I cut them, I put the fingernails, the fingernails go into the jalapenos, so the oil comes out. So you really want to scrub it well because eventually you're going to be touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and uh, it'll be painful for about five, 10 minutes. So make that extra step, take your time whenever you're cooking. There's no rush when you're cutting, when you're cooking, do that, okay? So, jalapenos turned out nicely. Now we're gonna make the goat cheese. So, the goat cheese is at room temperature. If it's not at room temperature, you can always put it in the microwave for 30 seconds or a minute, and so it's nice and soft, and so we can mix it. We'll add a little bit of honey to it. Again, you wanna have a little bit of sweetness to counteract the heat. I think that should be enough. We can always come back for more. I'm going to mix it first uh, before I put the cayenne pepper in there and we want it so it's smooth. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil in there which gives, gives it great flavor. You may say, gosh Dick, you just are always adding extra virgin olive oil. But it is a uh, great ingredient to have in there and it's good for you and it's great flavor. I'm going to add just a splash of the, uh, the Calavito extra virgin olive oil. Mix that in there. You can either use a spoon, you could use a fork, you could use a wire whisk. We just want to get it mixed in and we're almost there. Again, this is another spot where you can ask your client, uh, ask your guests, ask your family how much heat they want in there. And sometimes you can do this without any cayenne pepper or sometimes you can do two of them, one with, one without. That's a nice consistency. Add a little bit of salt, a little bit of ground pepper. It's also a good visual. And I'm gonna add just a splash of the red pepper, which will turn this goat cheese a little bit pink. Let's mix this one up. It's important to mix it so you don't get any clumps, so someone doesn't bite into it and get an entire, you know, mega dose of the, uh, the cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is, it's hot. Okay, so that's ready to go, mixed up well, evenly, and then I will put it onto 
the jalapenos. Now that the jalapenos are cooked, it is near, not nearly as, as, as hot as before. Okay, so there are two ways we can go with this. We can plate it like this, or you can roast it in the oven. Since these are, are warm, they just came out of the oven, I really don't think it's uh, necessary to roast them. But when you look at it, you can see the nice, the nice coloring of it. And I think it's, it's very pretty. We'll plate a couple of these. And you can vary how much you want of the, uh, of the goat cheese. I like a, a fair amount in there. Because who doesn't like goat cheese? I sure do. So it's important when you cut the uh, jalapenos that you leave enough that there's a, a little bit of a boat for the goat cheese to go into. So this size of the jalapenos is a nice one. I wouldn't recommend going with a smaller one, but you want a good size jalapeno. The last part you could do if you thought that maybe it wasn't quite sweet enough and for good color, you could take a little bit of the honey and drizzle it over it. It doesn't matter if you get it on the plate, it looks good. And there you have it. Jalapenos stuffed with goat cheese, honey, sea salt, pepper, a little cayenne. The last part you could do with this, if you wanted to, you could drizzle some aged balsamic, a balsamic glaze. But uh, I think that looks nice. So there you go. Next one, we're gonna plate up the, uh, the pulled pork. So with the bread that we've roasted and grilled, I'm gonna cut these into halves and then put a little bit more of the barbecue sauce on there to make it a little gooier and tastier. Mix that up. And again, there already is some heat in here. So I think having a little bit more barbecue in there helps to um, sweeten it up and soften it up. But you can see how nice it just, uh, it's a nice pulled pork. And then we'll put this onto the grilled baguettes. Don't go skimpy on the, uh, on the pulled pork. Everybody loves it. I'll cut these in half again, and then I'll put on the, uh, the coleslaw. And then on top of that, I'll put on the uh, bread and butter pickles. So it's a little bit heaping size there. So now I'm gonna cut it. Take your time. Hear that nice crunch. And we'll cut this one. And now we're ready for plating, okay? So one, two. Three, four. And then adding the coleslaw. It's cold coleslaw. It could be at room temperature if you wanted to. It doesn't matter that much uh, how you want to do it. But I think having the crunchiness of the coleslaw mixed in, it, uh, it just gives a little bit extra zing, gives it some extra color, and it's adding another dimension of flavor to it. This is a, a sweet coleslaw, again, to counteract the heat. I always like having a little bit of heat and sweet mixed in together. Pickles, bread and butter pickles. I just put one on top. You could put two, but I think one is a, is a good number to put in there. So there we have it. We have a roasted jalapenos with goat cheese, cayenne pepper, honey, sea salt. And then we have a great uh, pulled pork with barbecue sauce on grilled baguettes with sweet coleslaw and bread and butter pickles. Enjoy. Also, we want to thank our sponsors, Rugged Road Outdoors. This is how I store all my food when I bring it to clients. Uh, I always put it into uh, S.E. Johnson Ziploc bags. Wouldn't be anywhere without my Calavito extra virgin olive oil and our baking steels that we have. Thank you very much. Enjoy.